Hello, welcome back to the channel, Andy Brown 21 here on YouTube. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed already, click and subscribe to the channel. So today, uh, we're working on something a little bit different. It's a bit of a DIY project. What we're going to do is make a magic mirror. Now, this is a mirror that also displays information on it. So it's going to have a built-in Alexa. It's going to have a display on it that's going to show you various information and it'll also act as a music player and things like that so it's a magic mirror a um, little bit different so we're going to need a few parts to do this so bear with me and I'll take you through what we're going to need So to build our magic mirror, the first thing we need is special two-way glass or plastic. Now you can get this from Amazon, eBay, things like that. It's reasonably expensive, around about £50 for a smaller sheet. But I'll show you the piece that I've got and you can see how it works. Here we have it. You can see here we have the magic mirror. You can see it's currently, well, it's got a protective film on it just make that out there so that's why it's got a slightly dull view to it you can see it's quite good this is plastic as well so it's nice and easy to work with and you can see at the moment it is acting as a mirror and what happens is basically when you shine light through from underneath it will show that through and straight using a phone light so you can see the mirror is currently in reflective it's quite difficult to see anything going on here, but if I now move that light underneath, you can actually see straight through. So the light from the phone is coming through, and that's the principle of what we what we do to make it work. So all we need to do is put something underneath that will shine light through, and that will make the mirror operate. Two parts to this are what you need to know. First of all, and that is the size of your mirror glass so that's going to be the overall size of your mirror so make sure it'll fit on the wall that kind of thing so looking at this one that I've got here it is 42 centimeters by 59 and a half and what this works out at is a typical 20.5 21 inch computer screen will fit about halfway along this which is about what we want to do so in my case what i'm doing is it's going to be half a screen and half a mirror which should fit just about right it's also quite cheap to get computer screens that fit like that so it won't be touch screen that is something very clear this is not going to be a touch screen it's going to all be voice controlled if you need touch screen you'd need a capacitive touch screen monitor which is very expensive now as well, there's nothing to stop you putting a big screen behind this and having it all a screen. Because it will only be where something is displayed that it will shine through. So it will still work quite nicely as a mirror. But I'll show you what I'm going to do. So that's what we need. So next thing, we need to look at building a frame to hold it all together.
This is an important test to make sure that the screen will turn on the moment power is applied. You don't want to have to turn it on or off. Now again, doing this whilst the casing is still intact is a lot safer, but you can see the principle behind what I'm testing. Power on, the screen immediately comes to life. Now that's tested and unplugged, I can now take the screen completely apart, remove the screen and the electronic components from the plastic casing. Here you can see in my case, it's all contained in one piece and all the electronics are inside the metal casing at the back. So again, we need to strip this down and remove all the components. I'm showing you the insides of this one. Now this screen isn't ideal because as you can see from the other side, you can't quite at the moment, but the power goes straight in. So this has mains components and step down transformers inside the metal casing. Now what's even better are the newer screens that have external power bricks, which means all the internals are low voltage. That's much safer. So whenever you remove any of the ribbon cables, anything like that, do take care. They are very fragile. You can see I'm very carefully disconnecting the screen. And the frame itself. Now I went to, I think it was Home Bargains or B&M, one of those shops, go take a look and find a frame that fits the size of mirror that you've got or thereabouts. It's the best way and it gives you the best finish to the screen. Here's a couple of examples that I looked up. I'll put some information in the description below, but shop around, look for them. You can get them relatively cheap. I think this was about £10 for the frame, so not too bad remember that you are going to want to put the screen behind it so try to find something that you could mount the screen straight on the back you'll see as we progress where you need to be looking and what looks best here's the frame you can see I've removed the inner and the casing I've also put this black rubber strip which is holding the glass helping to hold it in place so that our mirror can then sit completely on the top of this. You could always inset as well. Now with our mirror glass to hold it in place, the easiest was to run a screw through the mounting bracket, that's the piece of the square piece of wood I made earlier, through the plastic mirror glass and into the main frame. Now you can see I've drilled holes into the mirror glass. Be very careful, it's very fragile. It should have been taped. You can see I have caused a little bit of damage here, which is unfortunate. Here you can see the principle behind the mirror glass again with a light as soon as it goes behind you can see that light through the mirror and that's how our screen's going to work so this just checks that everything fits and looks like it's going to work nicely so it's ready to mount into the frame so just a quick recap of how it fits together we have our purchased frame at the bottom you can see the mirror glass is laid on top so it's not inside the glass layer it's laid on and then we have our wooden surround that's going to those screws are going to go through the pre-drilled holes that I made through the mirror glass. Now that is very important that you line these screws up and make sure they do not screw into the plastic mirror glass because that will cause it to shatter. The reason I know that is because that's what one of the corners did on me. So get this nicely lined up and you can see this is the frame that we're going to use to fit our screen and our other components in the middle.
here you can see the first real view of the electronic components. So the bit highlighted here, the left hand side, that's the mains control board, which is for the monitor. So that came out of the metal casing of the screen. In the middle, you can see where the VGA and the DVI connector are. That is the control board, which goes with the computer monitor. So that's all the monitor components. Then at the right, you can see the VGA to HDMI. Unfortunately, the screen I had was VGA only. So I've had to use the VGA to HDMI converter for the Raspberry Pi. You can then see the black casing of the Raspberry Pi Model B that's going to drive all of this. And then you can also see the Amazon Alexa module at the bottom. Now I did originally want to integrate Alexa with a microphone into the Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, the software is not great for that. And I've actually found it easier to integrate talking to the Alexa itself using my own Python scripts. So we'll come on to that a little bit later. mounted into the casing you can see what I've got is a couple of angled blocks of wood that help hold the screen in place so if I just gently slide this in remember not to scratch the mirrored surface and you'll see that the screen then gets held quite nicely in place another angled piece of wood will then go in and hold it all solid again being careful when you screw any pieces of wood in to make sure they're not going to crack or put any undue force on the screen, the mirror, or any of those components. You can see using hand screwdrivers to fasten all of this together to make sure that there is not too much pressure applied onto it. For all the components, what I've used is double-sided sticky tape, quite tough industrial type things to hold everything in. You can also see a few square spacer blocks as well to lift components up off the magnetic board. You can see the double-sided I've used, and that holds the Alexa, the Pi, all of the component boards, etc., in place. So it keeps them nicely fixed and held exactly where you want. You don't want them moving around because when you lift the pane up, you don't want any of the components to move at all. Now onto the part that I'm not too pleased with. Unfortunately, the way that the power operates with this, I couldn't hide the power supplies inside the frame itself. You can see the Raspberry Pi supply is too thick. Most UK plugs and sockets are also too thick. So what I did was I've ran the USB cables and the power cables. You can see here the Alexa and the Raspberry Pi USB plugs out to an external socket and those will be outside of the frame. I'm actually going to hide those in the wall cavity in a standard UK three pin plug. That also helps make sure that it's kept safe, fused and uh, can be switched off easily if needed as well. And here we have the finished product. Now powering it on and making sure that it boots up and works. You can see it's upside down initially until the boot sequence finishes and it actually loads the right way up again. I'm using some of the configuration boot parameters on the Raspberry Pi to flip the screen so it's the right way up. This is just a cosmetic thing but uh, again very easily coded. I'll put some links to documents on how to do all of that in the description at the bottom of the video. But let's just make sure the screen loads up correctly before we finally attach it all together and screw the back casing on. You can see the Raspberry Pi desktop just loads, no background, and then our Magic Mirror software will start up. And again, that's using the Magic Mirror software that I'll link in the description below.
when it comes to mounting it you can be as brave as you want now initially i did think of actually cutting a hole so that it would fit completely recessed right into the wall however as you can see there is a metal girder in the way of where i wanted to cut so unfortunately that meant that i failed that method so what i'm going to do is use two brackets to hold it up against the wall and these two will work perfectly and here's the final product you can see it's up and working playing a video and attached to the wall you can see the metal bracket so it is sitting out from the wall a little bit but actually you don't notice this when you're looking at it so that looks like it's worked quite nicely so this has covered the main construction section part two the video on how to make the raspberry pi and the alexa work will be coming very shortly that will cover all of the programming how i've set the unit up how it copes with power loss everything like that to do with the raspberry pi and the other mirror components in there thank you so much for watching remember to subscribe so you can find out when part two of this video is released and if you like it give it a thumbs up and pop a comment down the bottom